I am Natalia Talbin, uh, Russia, Moscow, director of the Public Verdict Foundations, and uh, we are working to end torture in Russia. I am working in the field of human rights since the beginning of 90s. And uh, from one side, I consider myself as a human rights defender uh, and uh, actually devote all myself to this human rights work, but I'm not a lawyer. I'm a manager in an organization. I'm a director of organization. Our organization working in the area human rights and law enforcement bodies. So we are working on violations committed by law enforcement bodies, and we provide an assistance to people who became a victims of such violations. And doing this work, we see that uh, uh, this is not just seldom cases. The problem has a systematic uh, uh, nature. So what we are doing as a part of our analytical work that I am involved is uh, that we are analyzing why human rights violations is a widespread practice in the work of uh, law enforcement bodies. Uh, uh, what reasons that such violation practice continue to be existing in, in, in our system and what can be done in order to improve the situation, in order to uh, improve a human rights situation in Russia. So our analytical work is to understand why violations continue to be and what can be done or, and should be done in order to improve the situation. For example, right now in our organization, there are several cases uh, uh, we are working on. It's a cases of uh, torture in police stations. And uh, uh, we are trying to provide assistance, legal assistance to people who became victims of such uh, gross violations like torture and uh, push investigators uh, to investigate such cases uh, effectively and in accordance with our legislation. For example, just today, an hour ago, uh, several women came to our office uh, from one of uh, Russian region and uh, told us the story of... Uh, <coughs> sorry, of uh, violations uh, committed uh, uh, by the authorities, by the, by, by the law enforcement uh, officers, uh, uh, the violations committed to their relatives, which are now in pretrial detention. And we talked to them, uh, and uh, now we'll be analyzing the documents which they promised to send us. And after analyzing such documents, we'll decide uh, either there are human rights violations, and if we see grounds and uh, reasonable uh, uh, proofs that there are human rights violations, we would take this case and provide them legal assistance. We started to work in 2004, so 11 years ago. Actually, next Monday will be our 11th uh, birthday. Uh, and uh, when we started to do it, uh, we've been mm -hmm. in the situation then uh, torture, ill treatment, beaten in police uh, was widespread practice. And it, more, it was almost not possible uh, to uh, achieve a justice, uh, to put the perpetrators before the court and uh, achieve that they receive a fire. Um, big verdict. Uh, for these 10 years, uh, we are in the situation when torture continue to be a practice in police uh, and other law enforcement bodies. But uh, we have dozens of cases, one in the court, uh, more than 100 police officers <coughs> behind the bars, because of these uh, human rights violations. Now, in the situation, then state propaganda, especially because of the uh, uh, war conflict in Ukraine, is uh, uh, very huge. And the level of this propaganda, the level of lie on state-controlled 
mass media uh, creates the situation that uh, many people, much more people became uh, more aggressive and angry to the work uh, similar to what we are doing. Uh, yeah, you probably heard that uh, more than two years ago, uh, Russia adopted a new law, new legislation on non-governmental organizations, according to which those NGOs who are receiving foreign funds and engage in political activity should be included in the list of foreign agents. And foreign agents uh, in our society has uh, only one strong meaning spy and enemy of uh, Russia. And in this uh, law, the definition of political activity is uh, very broadly uh, described. And as a result, all our human rights activity, all our human rights work, providing assistance to uh, peaceful demonstrators, providing assistance to victims of torture, uh, making these problems uh, known for public, and uh, using international mechanisms like UN system to improve the situation on local level, all this considered as a political activity by our authorities. And uh, we've been uh, forcibly, not voluntarily, but uh, forcibly included in the list uh, of foreign agents. In this list, uh, we have now 38 organizations and uh, uh, almost all of them already appealed such inclusion in this list, uh, and a uh, few organizations already went through the court uh, considerations and they lost. Being in this list means that means not only additional uh, reporting requirements to all authorities, uh, it also means that at any of our publications or at uh, our website, we have to mention that public verdict is a foreign agent. Yeah. And it means stigmatization. I mean, simply means stigmatization for our society and uh, for, for our work. And we refuse to do it. We don't do it because uh, we are not consider ourselves as a foreign agents. We simply staying on the position that this is a lie. We are not foreign agents. We are agents of our society. We are agents of our people. We are working for their interests. And another um, uh, results of uh, inclusion us in the list of foreign agents is that we almost uh, uh, have no any possibilities to communicate to the authorities. If previously we had, uh, for example, trainings for investigators, uh, we had uh, discussions with the uh, staff of a penitentiary system on how to improve a situation in the penitentiary. Now we can't do it <coughs> because they don't want to communicate with the foreign agents. If uh, someone uh, found herself or himself uh, in the trouble and they don't know any other uh, structure or organizations uh, where to do and they don't believe that uh, uh, state structures will help them, they come to us and continue to come to us and uh, ask for the assistance. So we don't feel that people who became a victims stop coming to us. If you look at the story of uh, foreign agent law, which started more than two years ago, at the beginning, uh, this law says, said that uh, NGO should go voluntary to these uh, foreign agents. And Russian NGO, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, no one, no one independent NGO did not do it. So it was a solidarity position of Russian NGOs from one side. But from another side, uh, we received a huge support from abroad. And now this is not we who have to do it voluntarily. This is the authority 
who include us in the list. And this is a very different story. So we are in the list not because of us and not because we did it, but because the authorities put us in this list. And this happened uh, both because solidarity inside Russia and because uh, support and solidarity from abroad. And if such solidarity and support from abroad, moral support, support with the um, criticism of what's going on here will continue, for us it would be support.